The fighting first set sail from New York to the United Kingdom in early August 1942 to begin their training for the Second World War. Under the watchful eye of Major General Terry Allen, the division commander, the fighting first was kept busy, preparing for their first taste of combat. Across the sea, British and German armies clash under the scorching heat of the deserts of North Africa. Amidst these hellish conditions, General Bernard Montgomery and his British 8th Army had been able to hold off Rommel's blitzkrieg attacks through a war of attrition. But the deadlock needed to be broken. 
and the big red one, fresh from their training, waited eagerly for their call to action. Meanwhile, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and American President Franklin D. Roosevelt, along with General Dwight D. Eisenhower, devised an amphibious assault directed at the Vichy French-held territories of North Africa. Codenamed Operation Torch, the invasion was to start in late October of 1942, with the 1st Infantry Division embarking for the Algerian coast. Unsure if the German-occupied French forces would attack U.S. troops, bright American flag armbands were to be worn as a deterrent. However, this was the least of the Big Red One's worries, as Rommel's battle-hardened Africa Corps were not about to give in to these young American soldiers without a fight. I'm starving. I haven't eaten nothing since we left the ship. Hey, you know, my dad runs a deli back in the Bronx, makes the best pastrami sandwiches you'll ever eat. Brooklyn, you ain't quite right. <laughs> kind of like your sister, huh, you friggin' hayseed? Can you? Not to. Stay on the ball. This ain't boot camp. Hey, mad at you. Hey, Sarge, I thought you said the French were gonna surrender. Yeah, storming the beach was fun and all, but I gotta get back. I got tickets to the Yankee games. They're playing the Red Sox. I got box seats. Ah, shut the hell up, Bluefield. I said, can it? Resistance or not, we got an airfield to secure, Private. Tell you what, fellas. I'm glad those Frenchies decided to fight back. And for Christ's sake, Kelly, watch where you point that rifle. Try and remember that. It'll keep you from blowing the head off the guy next to you. Okay, Sarge. Look at all this sand, guys! I sure ain't in Jersey no more! Well, at least you can be thankful for that. Oh, God! Medic! Private, get on that gun! We got company! Hey, come here. 
was there. You should have seen me. It was incredible. Caught these two French bastards by surprise. <laughs> took them both out. Single-handed. Tell them, would you? You're full of it, Brooklyn. Hey, how many times I gotta tell you I'm from the Bronx? Just be glad you're not dead. Good work, but this was just a scrub team. Rommel and his boys are gonna be a hell of a lot tougher. Trust me. Okay, let's set up a perimeter ASAP. I don't want to lose this airfield to another counterattack. Now get going. Private, you better have a good reason why you're sitting in that tank and not in a half-track with the rest of your squad. It's my fault, sir. He just wanted a quick ride, and my younger brother is a pilot who wouldn't be alive today if it weren't for what you guys did back at that airfield. This is a U.S. Army, not a goddamn carnival, son. See that my rifleman is back in his half-track at your next stop. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Looks like we're moving the whole division up. What's going on, Sarge? 26 got their asses handed to them by Rommel and his damn Africa Corps. Well, we're coming to get it back, right, Sarge? Something like that, Vic. Get off the damn road! As I was saying, Rommel's panzers rolled over the 26th and took the pass. For some reason, they pulled out afterwards. Regiment sending us up to take it back, this time for keeps. Panzers? Our stewards don't stand a chance. We got anything bigger? Not much. We managed to scrape up a couple of half tracks with the 75s, like back in Oran. Jesus, Sarge, that ain't making me feel any better. Well, Vic, we gotta do something and fast. When we stop, grab some mines from the back. We'll leave a little surprise for Rommel. Too late! Hang on! If those tanks get through, we're screwed! Sarge, they're right on top of us! Man that gun now! No tanks get through, understand?
keeping us from advancing. Why don't you send the engineers in to clear it out? That's where you guys come in. Area's too hot for them without an escort. Sergeant Hassler and his boys are waiting by a footpath that leads to the minefield. Place is lousy with Germans, Sergeant. We're getting used to that, Mac. Appreciate the help. Okay, you heard him. I want you guys to escort those engineers. Just provide support. Don't do anything stupid. I need you alive. Behind these rocks! I think I know where he is. Stay put. I think I got him! We have to do something about that sniper. Grab that spring for you. You're a better shot with that thing than I am. I knew I could count on you two. I had it covered. The Germans have captured our artillery positions on the other side of the pass. We have to recapture them before our tanks can move through. Forward scouts have discovered an abandoned village in the hills above the pass. The route through it should take you directly to our captured artillery. Kelly, go with them. O'Brien, you still got any satchel charges with you? Hell yeah, Vic. I got enough comp B to blow us a hole all the way to China. Just clear the way, thank you. Move up!
Good to see you guys in one piece. That was some real nice soldier in there. Thanks, Sarge. Looks like you boys got the Desert Fox retreating with his tail between his legs. Time to head back to camp and get a hot meal. What the hell's going on? Looks like they're pulling back. I guess they didn't know we was coming. Shut up. Brooklyn, would All you? All right, gather around, boys. Just got word from battalion. The Germans are mounting a full-scale counterattack to retake this village. Well, we ain't gonna let that happen. Slow down, cowboy. This village is only a field hospital. Look around. Our medics aren't armed. What are you saying? I'm saying we gotta defend this position long enough to get our docks safely out of here. The forward OP puts the Germans to the southeast and closing fast. They'll be moving up the road towards our position with at least one full infantry division. Probably more. <laughs> you love those odds. Private, you, Kelly, and Brooklyn take a couple Actually, other men... Actually, Sarge, I'm from... Uh... Take a couple other men and set up defensive positions at the main intersection. You'll have a good field of fire from there. Keep those crowds out of this town. Understand? What about me? You're staying with me. here. Take me to him. Take Denley and assault the right flank. Make sure you grab what ammo you can from the trucks before you head out. Now get going.
This crappy mud pit is us. I hope our dogs got out okay. I think we gave him enough time. Now it's our turn. Let's hustle back to camp and get out of here. Ah, oh, crap! Panthers! Fall back! Fall back! Run! Now! Run! Run! Come on! Run! Watch out! Watch out! We'll go around! Dear brother, I hope this letter gets to you. I just got word that my squadron will be heading off for North Africa tomorrow. All right, guys, heads up. We're coming into the range of Oran. The first infantry will be landing later this morning. We're going to clear out as much resistance as possible. Hey, Stretch, isn't your brother in the big red one? Stretch, get in the ball turret. We're still a ways out from our target, but yesterday's sortie got jumped by a Luftwaffe patrol.
got crossfighters sighted at 12 o'clock high. Count of three bandits. B Flight 1 to Squadron Command. Requesting permission to climb to Angels 3 and engage. Negative B, request denied. They're just scouts, John. troops on the Tunisian coast. With nowhere to retreat and surrounded by Allied naval and air forces, the Africa Corps surrendered in May of 1943. Operation Torch was a resounding victory as the Big Red One took 40,000 prisoners and successfully helped push Germany out of North Africa. Meanwhile, Churchill convinces Roosevelt that attacking Europe through Italy will shorten the war, saying that the Mediterranean is the soft underbelly of the crocodile. Known as Operation Husky, plans are devised for another massive amphibious invasion, this time targeting Sicily and involving British and American troops, as well as the Navy and Air Corps. When the news reaches General George S. Patton that he will be commanding the American troops, the fiery general proclaims, I want those first division sons of bitches. I won't go on without them. After learning the true scale of the offensive, Hitler immediately cancels a planned offensive on the Russian front and orders the transfer of German troops to assist in the defense of the key Italian island. In the early morning hours of July 10th, 1943, 
with the coastline heavily defended and the fearsome Herman Daring Panzer Division lying in wait, the 1st Infantry Division prepares for another beach landing, this time near the town of Jela on the southwest shore of Sicily. The silence is broken when General Patton's command ship, the Monrovia, and other battleships begin to pound the Italian coast with massive 16-inch shells. As fires from the naval bombardment break out along the besieged coastline, the Big Red One is ordered into their assault boats to begin the invasion of Italy. Still have that comp B? Make us a door, would you?
Nice from Abel Company? No, Fox. There's a Lieutenant Delaney looking for you fellas. He's down the street that way. Sergeant, good to find you and your squad still in one piece. Hey, where's Parker? Damn Italians got him. Listen up, Hawk. A glider from the 82nd crashed near a school at the north side of town. We think some of them may still be alive, but the area is hot with Italian infantry. I can't spare anyone, so I need you and your squad to get over there and do what you can. Yes, sir. See you at the rendezvous point. You heard the man. Cross lively Ramo and water, and follow me. Sixteenth, sir. Fox Company. Well, you're a damn sight for sore eyes. We lost most of the stick in the crash. Only me and a couple of others made it out. We managed to secure the area for now, but it's only a matter of time before they regroup and counterattack. <laughs> Thank you, boys. We can take it from here. I'm starting to see why the Big Red One has a reputation. Thank you, sir. All right, Fox! Let's not keep the lieutenant waiting! Move out! That was brutal yesterday. That was nothing. Let me tell you, one time back in Africa, I found myself in front of an entire platoon of Frenchies. Took them all out, every one, by myself. That story gets more ridiculous every time you tell it. You know that? Hey, it's true. Hey, tell them it was true. You was there. Hey, Hawk, tell them it's true. Not now, Brooklyn. Orders just came down from Battalion CP. They need us to move up to Piano Lupo and reinforce a bunch of guys from the 82nd who've been holding out all night. There's not a lot of time. Aerial recon reports at least one division of crowd armor roll in from the north. I think it's the Hermann Goering division. Didn't we kick their asses back in Africa? I said not now, Brooklyn. We need some fire in the sky now! Get in that half track and take out those stukas! Okay? Count your arms and legs and let's go. Get down! Stay out of sight! What is it, Sarge? Take a look across the bridge. It's a whole convoy. But they ain't moving. They're shitting ducks. Thunder, this is Fox. What's your status? Over. Give me a grid reference for that bridge. Get it right, or those shells are gonna be dropping right on top of us. Good work. 
Thunder, this is Fox. Fire mission battery, grid 233937. Enemy convoy in open. Fire for effect. Over. Hold on to your helmets. This is gonna be close. Where's the rest of your squad, Corporal? They're pinned up ahead. They got some wounded, but I can't get to them. Let's get you up there, then. Grab that sniper rifle. We need it more than he does. Must be the naval liaison we heard about. Mangan, sir. I'll stay here and tend to these guys. Let's go! Move it! Move it! You must be from the 16th. We've been expecting you boys. Sergeant Hawkins. Captain James, 504th. Won't lie, glad you're here. We've been taking a real beating. Could use your extra muscle. Tell me that radio works. Yes, sir. Excellent. Without those big guns, we don't stand a chance. Where do you need us? German armor is getting real close. Send your best through those tunnels and up to the front line. Hurry! Yes, sir. Okay, people, you heard the captain. You and Vic, get going. Let's keep our Navy friend out of trouble. We'll bring up the rear. One, move in! All right, Mangan, you're up. Radio's broken, sir. It got pretty banged up in the explosion. How about that radio over there? Oh, I think so. I'm gonna need a few minutes, though. Get down there. Use those bunkers for cover. Hold off those tanks any way you can. Get this man the few minutes he needs. You sure you were right, Sarge? This one wasn't even close. Looks like Gehring's boys are on the run. Outstanding work, son. I'm putting you in for Corporal. You deserve it. Yeah, I guess you've done all right out there. Man, 
they've been bombing that berg for hours. There ain't gonna be no one left to fight. Suits me. At least the wind's shifting. I've had my fill of ash from that damn volcano. It ain't gonna be so bad. Hawk said the Germans are retreating. That's why the brass ordered another push. He said that the last five times we've gone in. Yeah? Well, if it wasn't for Hawk, we wouldn't have made it out of Africa line. And I'm up and enjoying a ride. Brooklyn's right. Hawk's always had our back. Ain't no reason to doubt him now. I wasn't saying that Hawk was... That's us. All right, let's get down to business. Keep formation and stay alert. This town must be at least a thousand years old. Yeah. Too bad Vic ain't here to see it. Lousy crowd of bastards. I still can't believe it. That son of a bitch. Selfish, mean-spirited bulldog was the toughest soldier we had. Get her up. Everyone all right? Now maybe we can say a word or two about Vic. match heroism of the 1st Infantry Division, Allied forces were able to overpower Axis troops at Jela and Troina. Even the tanks of the mighty Hermann Goering Division were no match for one of the most accomplished American fighting units of World War II. In 37 days of continuous fighting, the Big Red One had taken control of 18 towns and villages. Operation Husky was an unmitigated Allied success as Axis forces were driven from the island and the Mediterranean sea lanes reopened. Italian dictator Benito Mussolini is removed from power, and Italy surrenders on September 8, 1943. Churchill and Roosevelt, believing that momentum had shifted to the Allies' side, commit to opening a second front in Europe to aid the besieged Russian army. Involving over 4,000 landing craft and preceded by U.S. and British airborne drops, Operation Overlord is to be the largest amphibious invasion in history. 
Now under the command of Major General Clarence R. Huebner, the division sails back to the British Isles that October and begins training for what would become one of the most decisive conflicts of the war. In the early morning hours of June 6, 1944, under the umbrella of the English Channel's unpredictable weather, the invasion gets underway. The 1st Infantry Division is tasked with securing a section of the Normandy coast designated as Omaha Beach. But the German army is well prepared, and Rommel himself, looking for retribution for his sound defeat in North Africa, is tasked with the defense of northern France. The definitive turning point in the war is at hand, and Hitler's fortress Europa will soon taste the full fury of the battle-hardened troops of the Big Red One. Right, Kelly! Man, I don't know how those Navy guys do this. This is gonna be no sweat, right guys? I mean, they probably don't even know we're coming. Just like the lieutenant said. Oh, yeah, sure, just like the lieutenant said. Hey, Sarge, why aren't we in those Higgins boats? The rest of the division. Because it's our job to make sure those boys get to the beach alive, Private Kelly. I can't believe we're not getting any fire from the beach. Maybe our boys did a better job than we thought. Two kinds of people are staying on this beach! The dead and those who are going! 
Bandage and brass, boys. There's a supply depot beyond these doors we still need to secure. Do we have any idea how well guarded this thing is, Sarge? No idea, Kelly, but Fox's orders are to secure that depot, whatever the resistance. Same drill as always, eh, Sarge? Now someone get those goddamn doors open! Just a quick word. <clears throat> I've scraped through some tough fights since I've been in this man's army. Not to say that this one was the worst I've seen. We lost a lot of good men back there on that beach, and that's a damn shame. But by kicking down Hitler's front door, we saved the lives of hundreds more that will follow. You are the best of the best, and I am damn proud to serve with each and every one of you. All right, enough said. Gather up some ammo, get some rest. I have a feeling that we're just getting started. I'm surprised to see you back from the hospital so soon, Sarge. What happened? Sarge here got real friendly with a kraut mortar round. Too bad it wasn't you, Brooklyn. I could've used a break from your wisecracks. Hey, I'd take a nice, comfy hospital bed away from you guys anytime. Besides, what lovely nurse could refuse my obvious charm? Heads up, guys. Okay, form up. Word just came down from regiment. A few minutes ago, our flyboys hammered a German convoy that was headed for Mons. We need to recon the area and make sure they got the job done. Damn it. As I said, our boys did a number on them, so we can expect very little contact. The brass wants us to take a closer look and mop up any survivors before the dozers can roll in and clear the way. You boys pulled an easy detail for a change. In and out, quick. Back in time for the jump off. Questions? Outstanding, ladies! Mount up! Bastards. 
Our boys sure did give him help. Ambush! Back up! Get moving! Peeled. If there were any crowds in the area, they sure as hell heard what just happened out there. Okay, everyone, listen up. It appears we're not the only ones having a bad day. The Flyboys also missed a couple of 88s on the ridge not far from here. And they're raining hell down on the assault force. The entire regiment is pinned, and there's no way they can get through to us unless we take out those guns. Wait. The whole regiment is pinned down, and they expect to, to five of us to launch an assault on an entire German division? Glad you're paying attention, Private. Look, these guys are counting on us, and we can't let them down. How come everyone's always counting on us, Sarge? Because we're the infantry, Corporal, and God loves the infantry! Great. More hedgerows. Come on. We're almost there. Keep moving. Folks gonna be okay, right? Let them do their job, Brooklyn. Yeah, sure, no sweat. Sarge's gonna be just fine, just like always. Uh, he looks pretty bad. Is he still breathing? Of course he's still breathing. Sarge here's tougher than anything those lousy crowds get throw at him. He's gonna be just fine, I tell you. Just fine. 
That's right, Brooklyn. It's gonna be just fine. Hey, don't worry, Sarge. Doc's gonna patch you up real good. We'll see you real soon. Captain Delaney wants to see you and Corporal Kelly at the CP right away. What do you think that's all about, Sarge? Well, I heard Delaney talking to General Gordon about a big offensive at the Siegfried Line. I think they're sending us in first. Brooklyn says the U.S. Army consists of the Big Red One and ten lane replacements. I'm beginning to think Army Brass agrees, Schmitty. you to move your squad up with that armor and clear the town. Elements of Dog and Charlie will rendezvous with Fox at the train station. Move up!
Nice work, Sergeant. Abel and Charlie are reinforcing the town's perimeter. Anyone check to see if this Panzer is operational? Saw a couple of crowds trying to refuel it in a real hurry, so my guess is yeah. That's good news, Private. We can use it to assist what Shermans we have left. You boys have a full crew? We're one short, sir. Sergeant, I believe you got yourself some experience with the tank back in Africa. Climb up there and help these boys out. Sergeant. It's more than likely the Germans will have set up a roadblock ahead, so we'll move through the forest and hook up with Abel. Got them all. Sergeant, get over here! Wait for my signal, Smith. Here we go! Wait for it. Wait for it. Now! success over the merciless German defenders on Omaha Beach. The division advances an average of 20 miles a day and eventually make their way to Germany's doorstep. 
Reaching the heavily fortified Siegfried Line on September 12th, the division crosses into Germany for the first time. In brutal house-to-house -house fighting, they capture Aachen on October 21st, the first German city to fall. That winter, in an act of desperation, Germany launches a massive offensive in the Ardennes, and the Big Red One is tasked with holding the line in what would later be known as the Battle of the Bulge. Eventually fighting their way back into Germany by January of 1944, they cross the Rhine River and continue to advance across Germany. The division finds itself in Czechoslovakia on May 8, 1945, when the war in Europe is finally over as Germany surrenders. In 443 days of combat, the division had suffered over 20,000 casualties. By the war's end, they had taken more than 100,000 prisoners and received 16 medals of honor, as well as the distinction of being America's most accomplished fighting division of the Second World War. From the early battles in the deserts of North Africa to the rolling hillsides of Sicily and into the darkest days of occupied France, the members of the Big Red One had been ordinary soldiers tasked with truly extraordinary deeds. Their commitment to success at all costs is reflected in their motto. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first.